Hey, welcome back everybody. This is uh, Chess for Nights, our uh, class here at the St. Louis Chess Club every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And today we're going to be discussing about a very typical sacrifice, uh, the sacrifice on H7, which can create a lot of problems for your opponent if executed uh, correctly. So let's get it going. This is the position, guys. Uh, you're going to be white. I want you to think for a little bit and try to calculate all the way until the end. I know some of you already know the answer, and this is, once again, very, very typical sacrifice, but a lot of you don't know it. So take some time, think about it. Think about uh, some typical features of this position, and then start calculating. Yes. <clears throat> One question. Uh, what are some some typical uh, features of this position? What can you tell me interesting about the position? White has an advantage in space. Very good. White has a space advantage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the knights cannot uh, get closer to the king and therefore uh, defend the king, right? Bishop is on c1, defending the knight whenever it has to go to uh, a g5. Defending the potential maneuver with the knight on g5, uh, which gets, once again, another attacker closer to the black king, right? Anything else? That's about it. The queen is excellently placed, yeah? Despite the fact that it hasn't moved, it's not developed, as we would say. Uh, it actually is developed, because it's ready to jump immediately on the king side and put more pressure on the king. So all our forces are attacking the king. The bis this bishop, this bishop, this knight, this queen, they're all contributing to the same goal, and that is uh, to checkmate the black king. How many defenders do does black have? Yes. Hmm? Zero. Uh, zero defenders. I mean, I, I, I would give him one defender. It's pretty close to the king, right? The rook. Um, the queen could potentially be considered a defender, but... Okay, it's protecting this square, but unfortunately it's not enough, yeah? <laughs> if this bishop wouldn't be here, then the queen could potentially be considered a defender as well. But Yes, I would give it, for the moment, uh, only one defender to black. So now let's try to calculate. And what I'm trying to, uh, when I'm saying calculate, I want you guys to visualize the whole variation in your head, and I want you guys to give me the whole variation with ramifications along the way, with other options for your opponent, and how are you going to uh, finish him off in all of those options. No, the first move is actually bishop takes h7. So he, he, he was right. The sacrifice on h7. Uh, knight to g5 is definitely a good move, a very interesting move. The problem is I'm just simply going to defend. You're attacking my pawn on h7, um, but your attack is not as fast as it could be. So now I have time to uh, bring my defenders in. Well, bring, potentially bring my defenders into the game. For once, I can just simply play this move, h6. I can also play this move g6 with the same idea defending the pawn on h7 right so there's plenty of defenses and of course you still have the space advantage you still have the better chances in my opinion you could potentially do something like queen g4 uh, prepare the queen lift on the fourth rank attack the pawn on h7 bring your forces closer closer to the king and then you're still going to have the advantage but in this particular case you actually have a way to just uh, get a decisive advantage immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, bishop takes h7. All right, bishop takes h7. Let's try to calculate. Bishop takes h7. Yeah, go on. King takes h7. 
Knight g5 check. All right, let's see it on the board. Now, black has a few options, right? He has four options. Some of them are better than the others. Two of them are very easy to be solved. Hmm? So I'm going to start with this one. This is the easiest one to be solved. And I want somebody that hasn't answered yet. Yes, yellow in the back. Queen to h5, absolutely. King to g8. Queen h7, checkmate. Yeah, that's it. That was the easy one, of course. Now, what if I go to h6? This is pretty easy as well. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Knight takes f7, and that's actually a double check. Very good. Both uh, the bishop and the knight are attacking, are checking the king. Uh, the king has to move. Then we're just simply going to capture the queen. That's going to be game over. Yeah? Easy conversion after that. So, okay, let's get to the more serious options for black. Let's go king g8. And what I want you guys is for one of you to give me the whole variation from beginning to the end. If possible, till the checkmate. So whenever you raise your hand, be sure to have the whole one, two, three, four, five, six moves. So Quite a few. You have to have everything planned. <laughs> not, not you because I know you know. Not you for the moment because I know you know and you already answered. So somebody that hasn't tried their hand at it. Be sure to know the whole thing, okay? So calculate, visualize, visualize the whole variation in your hand. Do I see a hand in the back? Still thinking, okay. You already answered and I know you know it. And I see some tentative raises of hand. And then they go back down very quickly. Come on, calculate the whole thing. Be sure about your answer and then just give it to me. Yes. Queen h5, go on, continue. What is black going to do? If he's going to do that, then we have a winning position. Yeah. Um, at least from a material point of view, we have a winning position. Yeah, we're just simply going to retake with the bishop. Now we're going to have a queen for two pieces, for two knights. A queen and a pawn for two knights. So that's definitely uh, enough material to consider it a decisive advantage. Or if he does any other move, just Well, he, he's going to go rook to e8. What are you going to do now? The whole thing. Queen takes f7, king to h8. Continue. 
Lower your hands. Continue. Come on. Knight takes e6. Um, now, I would say this is underperforming. This is uh, an underperforming move. Because I think I'm simply going to defend with queen e7. You don't have the checkmate on g7. So now what you can do, you can still check, go here, and then you attack both my rooks. Of course, you're still going to get a decisive advantage, more or less. I can go rook f8, you take this rook, but now your knight is a little bit out of play. Yeah. And potentially, I'm going to be able to attack it and then capture it. And if I manage to capture it, then I'm starting to have some chances, at least, right? <coughs> now, you have a much better alternative. Much, much better. Yes. Queen, H5. Queen to h5, the whole thing. I go king, a, king g8, only move. Nope. Again, underperforming. Underperforming move. I'm, I'm going to go uh, queen to e7, the same thing. And now, what I assume you had in mind was queen to h8. But then the problem is the consequence of you moving the queen from h5 to h8 is that the knight on f7 is no longer protected. So that's, you know, that's just going to be actually losing for you, for white. Yes. What is your question? I'm going to do the same thing, king to g8. Actually, you know what? If you go queen g6, I might even have a better alternative. I might be able to go knight f8. Bringing the knight to the defense, right? What are you going to do now? You can go knight f7. But then I go king g8. And then if you take my queen, I take your queen. Yeah? So that might not, be, I, again, this is, you have such a strong option here that everything else just pales into comparison with, uh, with, with this one. I know most of you know it, but I want some, somebody else. Somebody else, maybe. Queen to h5 is the first move. King to g8. Continue. Now ask yourselves, why did you take this pawn on f from f7? Why did, why did you decide to do that first and not just uh, you know, continue with checks a different path, a different route? OK. Behind you. You, no? OK, yellow. Uh, H7. H7, there's no pawn going to H7. No, queen H7. Ah, queen H7, yeah, thank you. And then king moves to, yeah, I think. And then queen H8. Queen to H8, king moves here. Queen takes g7, and that's a, a checkmate. And now we see that the absence of the pawn on f7 is crucial, yeah? That's why we took the pawn on f7 first. This is checkmate. Everything is forced. So we solved king g8. What if he goes king g6? Now I think we have a few options, but let's see which one is the best. There's a few ways of attacking. Um, yeah. Queen d3 is one way. Uh, the problem with queen d3 is that I'm simply going to go f5. This is my only move, my only defensive move. And you, this is a very, very well-known pattern. The whole position is a very well-known pattern. So you should probably remember it. Um, as accurately as possible. Yes, 
you can go queen g3 and now you're reinforcing your threat, yeah? But I think even easier, maybe, in this position, could be to uh, go queen g4 first, yeah? The same thing, if he goes f5, you can go queen g3, so I agree with that. Another way, h4, very good. The same idea, right? You're trying to attack the king, you're trying to displace the king from this fairly safe square, yeah? You would love to put the king on h6, to force the king to go to h6, uh, because then a lot of discovery checks are going to uh, become a possibility. So, after h4, okay, I'm going to go rook to h8. How about this move? Is this a good move? Actually, I'm not even sure if this is a good move. <laughs> Actually, it's not. No, no, no. This is a good move, guys. This is a good move. But think of, uh, try to understand why. What, what happens after the only move, which is rook takes h5? Surely this might not be a good move. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you have a way. Uh, you have a good way of, of winning a lot of material. But I think there's only one precise way of doing that. And you have options. So there's a lot of ways to, uh, to misplay this position. Uh, yeah, I think you, if, you, if you can get a full rook that will put you up on exchange, that should be good. That should definitely be good. Hmm? Right? Yeah, and then you're, um, is, and you're giving the exchange again, so you will be down, you'll be, you'll be up two minor pieces for a rock? No, no, not two minor, no, 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 I want a full rook. I want you guys to get a full rook in this position. Uh, that will put you up on exchange, yeah? Because you already gave a piece. So if you get a full rook, then that's going to be up on exchange. You are a full piece down right now. Be careful, it's not that easy. It's not that easy because um, black has his, uh, his, his threats in this position. Black would love to eliminate your attackers. So his next move, if possible, would be rook takes g5, bishop takes g5, queen takes g5, and then that's going to be decisive advantage actually for black. Yeah? He's going to have three pieces for a rook. That's huge. So we have to be a little bit careful. We have to be forced as well. Queen to d3, okay. That's a very good start. The only good start in the position. Go on. Black has two options. Uh, no. You cannot move to f6. Yeah. One second. Yeah. F6. No, F5. F5, that's one option. And the other one? King to h6. Um, let's start with the easy move. Anybody? Knight takes f7. Knight takes f7. That's one checkmate. Queen h7, that's another one. There's quite a few options, yeah? You can also just simply take on e6 and take the queen. But I always emphasize the fact that you should be precise. So no, don't take on e6 and take the queen. Just give the checkmate as soon as possible. So, after queen d3, of course, he's going to go f5. Yeah? Somebody. He takes f5. He takes f6. f6. Well, I mean, the pawn was on f5, so I'll, yeah, I'll, 
uh, I'll, allow, I'll, I'll allow you this, uh, this uh, misstep. He's going to have to do what? King takes f6, right? And now? Very good. Queen to f3 check. And um, that's, a double, uh, that's a double attack. That's exactly why we baited this rook to go to h5. Yeah. We basically forced it to go to h5 uh, through this idea of h4, h5. And now he's uh, in big trouble. Because if he's going to go king to g6 to defend play, um, the rook. Queen to f7, very good. King to h6, only move once again. One, one, one at a time, one at a time. Knight takes e6. Knight takes e6, okay. And uh, this is a discovery check. You're attacking the queen, you're going to capture that queen. Actually, I think uh, next move is not even capturing the queen. Uh, whatever he puts in front of this king, queen takes g7. Let's say he puts the queen in front. We can go queen takes g7, that's checkmate. The queen is pinned, yeah? The queen is pinned, queen is protected by the knight, it's just game over. So, quite easy. Um, of course, most positions are different, yeah? But the same principles apply. Whenever you see your opponent uh, kind of not having any defenders around his king, whenever you see this formation, these pawn chains that give you the, uh, the space advantage in the center. Whenever you have this uh, pair of bishops set up nicely on these two diagonals, whenever you have your knight ready to jump to g5, it should jump into your, uh, in, in, into your face and say, sacrifice me. The bishop on d3 will, will say, sacrifice me on h7. You should always remember about that, okay? Uh, I guarantee you, you're going to... Uh, you're going to execute the sacrifice plenty of times, and you're probably going to be at the receiving end of it quite a few times. All right, uh, let's do another quick one, just to kind of solidify this whole idea. And now you see another setup, another type of setup for this Greek gift sacrifice, yeah? And what is the difference compared to the previous position? What's the big difference in the position compared to the, to the previous position, yes? That's one, yeah. The pawn on d7 is on d7 instead of d5. The knight on d5 is, well, basically they <coughs> switched places, yeah? And, uh, used to be on c3. Right, right. It's a little bit different, but the same principles apply. There is nevertheless a much more important difference that I want you guys to spot. Yes. The bishop is in front of the queen. No, no, the bishop was in front of the queen previous in the previous position as well. Wasn't it? Maybe it wasn't. Okay. You go. No, 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 no. Again, the difference. I want to know the difference. No 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 moves. I don't want any moves right now. I just want to know the difference to the previous position. That's a big one. It's a big difference. I know you know. Come on, it's obvious. Somebody tell me. All right. The rook is on h1. Thank you. Not that difficult. Come on, guys. Previously, we had the castle on, right? Now the rook is on h1, which is huge. Also, the pawn is on h4 already, yeah? Before the pawn was on h2. So now, bishop takes h7 comes naturally, yeah? Despite the fact that he has this bishop on e7. So remember, whenever he has this bishop on e7, we could potentially prepare this Greek gift sacrifice uh, by moving the pawn from h2 to h4 and not castling before, yeah? Because we actually need this rook. King takes h7, continue, somebody. 
somebody who hasn't answered too much, somebody around here, on this side. This side is super active. This side, uh, not so much. Come on. Want some more activity? Yes, I see all of you have your hands raised on this side. You tell me. Come on. Somebody. Yellow. In the back. You have some ideas? No? Green. Come on. Give me something. Give me something. Thank you very much. Knight to g5. Very good. All right. Trust your instincts a bit more, yeah? I want more activity from uh, the right side of, uh, of, of, cla of the class. So now the problem is, if he takes with the bishop and he eliminates this uh, attacker of mine, what am I going to do? Yes, all the way in the back. Mm -hmm. Pawn takes bishop, h takes g5, of course, because Okay, you eliminated one of my defenders, uh, one of my attackers, sorry, and now I'm going to introduce another attacker, the rook, a much more powerful attacker, actually. And whatever you do next, whether you go king g8 or king g6, I'm going to do what? Let's say king g6. Yeah. What? Queen d3? Um, it probably works as well, but it's far from the most, uh, from the best continuation. It's not, it's not even close. I mean, when you have the option of taking the black king, your opponent's king, for a ride closer to the center, I mean, you should definitely do that. So just check him, yeah? Get him closer to your own, um, to the center, you know? He's going to feel very endangered. And now, I guess the easiest way. I think there's quite a few ways of, of, of winning this position, of course. I don't even know which one is the easiest. You know what, to make the challenge a bit more uh, difficult for you guys. Give me a move without a check that wins. Which one? G3. Um, what's the idea? What's your next move? Because G3 defends the same square that was already defended, the uh, square on F4, right? G3 is one. I mean, probably G3 wins as well, to be honest. At this point, so many moves win. I think. For example, rook h4 is one interesting move that wins on the spot. What's the point? What's my threat? I'm threatening checkmate in two moves. With what? And he cannot defend against it, to be honest. I don't see the defense. I'm cutting this fourth rank for his king. So now what I want to do is take control over the fifth rank by playing the move g6. I would love to play the move g6 next move, open up my queen, and the king is just going to be trapped. If he goes g6, now the problem is he doesn't have uh, a square to retreat to, so I'm just simply going to go queen, queen to g4, and that's, once again, checkmate. So, I don't see, do you guys see any defense against g6? No. No. There's absolutely no defense against g6. The game is over. So... Easier than that, checkmate in two moves with checks, only checks, well, check, checkmate, in two moves, not more than two moves. So, 
forced checkmate in two moves. I don't want your opponent to be able to give any of his piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. In the back. Queen to h3, very good. If king g6, queen to h7, yeah? The king is checkmated. If king to e4, only other move. Queen to d3, checkmate, yeah? Queen to f3 is not a checkmate because I'm simply going to take your pawn. So you have to defend the pawn at the same time. Of course, these are just um, kind of details. I'm, I'm pretty sure even queen f3 in this position wins. There should be a checkmate here. The king is just way too exposed. Um, with that being said, once again, I want you guys to try to be as precise as possible, yeah? Because, uh, okay, in this position, maybe it will not matter. Maybe it, you will win no matter what. But in positions where you only have one option that wins, and all the others are giving away all your advantage. If you don't maintain your precision, then you're going to be in trouble.